Welcome back everyone, hope you're doing well. So roughly 10 weeks ago we started another Twinscape experiment and the point of this experiment was to see if we could grow plants better with reverse osmosis water. A lot of the big names out there use it all the time and swear by it, so I wanted to see what the differences are. So just like every other experiment, I set up two tanks in the exact same way. We're using a 20 liter or 5 gallon optic wide rimless aquarium, filled with 3 kilos of aquasol and 4 root caps. Then for the rest of the equipment, we're using a T-Heroes A2 series light, OASA filter smart external filter, and for CO2 we're using my DOI sugar and yeast CO2 system. Because we're mainly focusing on plant growth, I bought 3 easy plants, 4 medium category plants, and 2 advanced plants. The aquarium on the left was filled with my tap water, which has a KH of 7, a pH of 8, and a GH of 9. The aquarium on the right was filled with pure RO water, that was then remineralized to a TDS of 120. Both tanks had a great start, but after 9 days I started to get a lot of green dust algae in the RO aquarium. I had a few theories why this happened, but I'm still not 100% sure what caused it. Luckily though I managed to kill it by overdosing some liquid carbon. It's now 10 weeks later, and I think that's long enough for this experiment. So it's been a while since I did an update on our uh, Twinscape experiment, the tap water versus RO water. Basically just because I've been busy with the Big Shallow, I've been busy with some other projects. And both of these tanks have just been ticking along just fine and I haven't really seen any clear differences between them. So there was not really much to update you on anyway. So this is the current situation in the aquarium with the reverse osmosis water. As you can see it's looking pretty good, plants have grown in nicely. Um, but I'm still struggling with some green dust algae. You can see here on the left side especially we have a lot of green dust algae on the glass. Uh, there's a little bit on the right side as well. And there was some on the front glass as well where I cleaned it with the razor scraper. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the, what the problem is. I've been struggling with that from the very beginning. At some point I had it under control, I thought, and I, I thought I killed it with liquid carbon, but yeah, I came back again. And we have some new inhabitants as well. I got some shrimp from a friend of mine. These are uh, orange neo caridina shrimp, looking really good, still very young though. I got them from Frank. Frank is a friend of mine, and I actually visited his, um, his home a while ago. I made a video about that, which I will leave right here. Definitely check that out, he has some beautiful aquascapes. So yeah, that's uh, basically this tank. We definitely need to trim the stem plants because they have been growing out of control. So today we're going to give both tanks a little trimming session. And here we have the aquarium with tap water. So yeah, as you can see, it uh, looks pretty similar. The only real big difference in my opinion is the s repens this um, plant here just in front of the rock. Here it's looking good, but it's not super dense. But in the RO tank, you see it's much more dense actually. So I think that is like the only difference here. Yeah, besides that, this aquarium is also looking very good. In here we have also new shrimp, also new shrimp that I got from Frank. And these are a new Caridina green jade. Yeah, I think they're called green jade green, green jade, something like that. I got like 10, 15 of both colors, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, this aquarium also needs a trimming session. So I'm already pretty convinced that for my situation and for my tap water, switching to reverse osmosis is not really going to give me much benefits. I'm just trying to grow basic plants here and they'll do just fine in my tap water. But I don't just want to like end this experiment and just start with something else. I think we have to do like one more challenge. So what I'm actually thinking is to just give both things a good trimming session and then bump up the lights a little bit, bump up the fertilizer a little bit and then see which tank is going to grow back faster. I think that will be cool to see. So I think I'm just going to remove the majority of the floating plants. Also trim all the stem plants. I'll basically trim all the plants besides the carpet. The carpet doesn't really need to be trimmed. I'll also remove all these spikes from the Eriokaulon. And do that with both tanks. And then start taking daily pictures again just to see the progress, you know. And do that for like two weeks, three weeks, something like that. And then just see if there's any big differences. Alright, that's both tanks trimmed. I think that looks pretty equal if you ask me. Let's do a little close up just in case. That's the reverse osmosis water tank. And that is the tap water aquarium. 
So I'm going to take a picture of both tanks every single day for like the next two or three weeks. And you guys are going to see that now in three, two, one. And we're back already. It's now been 17 days since we trimmed the tanks and I'm surprised by how fast everything has grown back. Just over two and a half weeks. In the past 17 days, I've only been dosing just a little bit of potassium. That's all, no, no nitrates, no phosphates, no micronutrients, nothing, just a little bit of potassium. And yeah, plants are like in a perfect shape right now. I think it was already clear from the time-lapse that the differences were very, very minimal to almost non-existent. And uh, we're now looking at the tap water aquarium looking super healthy the rotala bridge already reached the water surface after 17 days uh, we have some nice color on the ludwigia super red uh, some nice spikes coming from the irio kaulon i really love those spikes some really good color on the hygrophila araguaya as well we basically almost have a full carpet with the mouse layer zuta yeah there was basically no algae in here as well in the past 17 days i've only done two maybe 40% of water changes and there was barely any algae on the glass, nothing on the plants, nothing on the rocks. So yeah, couldn't, gonna, couldn't have gone any better to be honest. Yeah, same thing over here in the RO water aquarium, just super healthy plant growth, no visible algae. I'm really happy with how these, uh, how both tanks are looking right now. So if you would ask me if there's a difference between the two tanks in terms of plant growth, I think I can literally only spot one one difference and I have to be really really picky and the difference that I can see is with the stem plant in the back so yeah, this stem plant in the back the green one that's the Meriophyllum matrogrossensa um, I think in, the, in this aquarium the RO water aquarium is looking a little bit better especially if you look at it from the top you can see that the tops are just looking very healthy very vibrant green and very dense as well and the tops are quite big and if you move over to the tap water aquarium and uh, the tops are not as vibrant green, not as big, and not as dense in my opinion. But it's literally just a small, small difference. I mean, still it looks super healthy. I mean, yeah, can't really complain about the plant growth to be honest. Okay, maybe one more small difference, but I'm being really picky here. Um, this plant in the middle, just below the rock, that's the Starogyne repens. So over here, this is the tap water aquarium. It's looking quite okay. But here in the RO water aquarium, you can kind of see that it's a bit more, a bit more dense. It's bit, just a bit more growth, it's a bit more compact. Yeah, it could have also been that I've just planted a few more stems in here and that could also be, but yeah, it's just super small differences. So that leaves us with our final question, is our O better than TAP? Well, I think we can't really just make a final statement about it. I think it really just depends on the situation. And in this particular situation, it wasn't better. The results were exactly the same. So no, our old water was not better than tap water in this particular situation. But I think if you would change some variables, for example, if you would remove the CO2 from both tanks, I think in that situation, our old water might have, been, might have given us better results. Um, another scenario I can think of is if we would include um, rocks that release calcium in the water with these two tanks, with this experiment. I think in that particular situation, our old water probably would have performed better as well. But yeah, that's it. There's just with this hobby, there are so many variables, and it's hard to make one final decision or one final statement. I think this was just one experiment, and I think we learned a lot from it. It was definitely cool to try it as well. But I think it's time we wrap it up, and it's time we try a new experiment. I already know exactly which experiment it's going to be, and I'm super excited about it. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna take a few weeks before I can release a new video about it. In the meantime, if you guys have other suggestions for other experiments, let me know in the comments as well. We will just keep these two twinscapes and we'll keep doing experiments with them. So that's it guys, hope you enjoyed this one. 
Don't forget to smash that like button and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.